I'm Debbie Ingram. I am running for Lieutenant Governor of Vermont as a Democrat, and this is a virtual tour of Vermont. Join us this week for Vermont's largest county, Chittenden County. As we look at Chittenden County by the numbers, we see that it has the largest population in the state at almost 164,000 people. It also has the highest percentage of non-white uh, population at 9.9% compared to 5.8 for the rest of the state. The uh, percentage of the population living below the poverty line is uh, slightly lower than the rest of the state at 10.4%. And the median family income is uh, considerably higher at almost 67,000. The home price is also higher as is the gross median rent, 304,000 for the home and 1,186 for the rent uh, is quite, quite a bit higher. Uh, and then it might surprise some to know that there are so many farms in Chittenden County at 585. I myself live in one of the rural areas of the county. One of the things that I really enjoy doing in Chittenden County is go down to Burlington's Waterfront Park. It's right on the shore of Lake Champlain and there is a boardwalk where you can just take a nice stroll. Uh, there's a bike path, which has gotten uh, lots of attention, rightly so. It's, um, it's really great. Um, it is often, uh, although not right now during COVID, but it's often a destination for food and music festivals like the Burlington Discover Jazz Festival and the Lake Champlain Maritime Festival. And something very special at the waterfront is ECHO, the Leahy Center for Lake Champlain which is um, a museum, a facility dedicated to um, all kinds of scientific information about Lake Champlain. It has uh, 100 different interactive exhibits, 70 species of fish, reptiles, and amphibians, um, changing exhibits all the time, um, and it's great for kids and the whole family. The whole area is really a special place. Historically speaking, one of Burlington's great contributions was producing uh, one of America's most prominent philosophers, psychologists, and educators, John Dewey. John grew up as a Burlington native, and you know, he attended Burlington schools, entered the University of Vermont at just age 15, and then four years later graduated second in his class with a degree in philosophy in 1879 and also earned uh, an advanced degree in philosophy and psychology at Johns Hopkins University five years later. His great contribution was um, as the co-founder of the New School of Social Research. And in his numerous articles, essays, and books, he um, articulated the philosophy that the school is a social institution aiming to develop social consciousness in the child through experiential and expressive activities, engaging children in conversation, inquiry, construction, and artistic activities. So John Dewey is one of the great contributors to the history of the United States, of education, and certainly of Vermont. So I'm here now with Mickey Wiles, who is the founder and CEO of a unique staffing agency called Working Fields. Thank you for being with us, Mickey. Well, Working Fields is a mission-driven staffing agency, and we work with individuals in recovery uh, from substance use addiction and individuals with past convictions uh, in, in, to help them with uh, returning to the workforce or getting back into the workforce, and most importantly, supporting them in their recovery uh, through a technique of recovery coaching. What we're able to do is to uh, bring them in, spend time with them to uh, really get a good understanding of where they are in their recovery, uh, how far they've gone down that path, what their level of stability is. And then we have w over 40 employers that we work with on a regular basis that we can match individuals to, uh, to give them, to, to, to provide the best opportunity for them, uh, the best chance of success. And then when we place them on assignment, um, we provide a recovery coach. And when we provide that recovery coach, what that recovery coach is doing is working with the individual uh, minimally on a weekly basis 
to provide them support uh, on all aspects of the recovery to really help them uh, in whatever way they need. And really what recovery coaching is, is, is motivational interviewing and resource connection. Uh, they're generally individuals who are uh, in recovery themselves, so it's peer-to-peer -peer support. Um, and they've been trained through the Vermont Recovery Academy, and they are able to uh, uh, help them in, in finding, really, you know, developing goals and helping them find uh, the right path and determine what their priorities are, what they really need to focus on, and then help connect them to the right resources and then support them on a weekly basis. Everybody that works here is in um, long-term recovery themselves. And that really goes a long ways when we're meeting and working with individuals. We, we sit down across the table from them for the first time and, and we tell them what we do and who we are. And we say, by the way, we were sitting in your seat at one point in our life. Uh, it, it means a lot and it allows them the ability to be more at ease and to open up with us and we begin to build trust. And really that's uh, an important component of uh, what we do is building trust with individuals who sometimes have come out of systems where, you know, they've just, nobody's really trusted them. You know, they, they, have, they have struggles and battles. And, um, we um, are able to, um, you know, help break that down somewhat. With me right now is Erin Everts, who is the executive director of the Lyric Theatre Company. We rehearse for up to three months for some of our shows, and we have rehearsed in church basements, middle schools, high schools, gyms, everywhere we could for years. And so to now be able to do it all in one space is really exciting. And one of the great things about the creative space is that we're now also a hub for other artistic groups. And so since we've opened the creative space, we've opened our doors to over a dozen other organizations to come in and rehearse their shows here. Um, there's other organizations, dance teams, um, theater companies that can come in and use this space because it is such a wonderful resource. Yeah, that's really, really nice and very valuable. Um, so tell us about COVID and how that has um, has affected um, your plans uh, for the future and how you adapted. Yeah, well, I would say that it, it hasn't been easy. I'll, I'll say that. It's been an adventure since day one, which was for us uh, that Friday, March 13th. And we, on that day, we had to tell our cast for Matilda that we were no longer going to be able to put that show up in the Flynn in April. Um, and I was so overwhelmed by the camaraderie of the people involved in that cast and our community just saying, we're going to do it when we can and when it's safe for the audience and when it's safe for our teams to be back together. Um, and we're just, we're in a holding pattern right now. Um, and in the meantime, we got a call from the city of Burlington and they asked us if we could help out with making masks. And one of the things that we have is a lot of volunteers and we had a lot of volunteers who weren't doing anything because the show got postponed. So what did we do? We jumped into action and uh, answered the call and we made over 20,000 masks with the help of a couple other organizations locally, the Milton Artists Guild and a couple other people. Um, and groups, but we had over hundreds and hundreds of volunteers coming in and taking the materials from Lyric to make these masks that went out to essential workers free of charge. And uh, we were a hub for both volunteers and materials for about three and a half months, and we're still working on it. Well, it's so great. It's really a wonderful way to contribute to the community. It's part of our mission is to always share our resources and the things that we have. And that's something we have is we have unbridled amounts of volunteer energy. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure that we use that for something productive in this time. So thank you very, very much, Erin, for talking. Oh, about you're that. welcome. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you for joining us this week as we tour Chittenden County. I'm Debbie Ingram. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor as a Democrat. And remember, you can vote right now. You can get a mail-in ballot. Uh, election day is August 11th, but voting has started. So please remember to vote for me, Debbie Ingram.